Welcome everyone. Addy made the woo here as the recording of this Tuesday, October 19th, 2021. I feel like there's a truck backing up. Going on a little bit of a back road adventure today. I'm gonna head up, well, down southbound to Frostproof, about 50 miles, and then cut across to Fort Meade. Maybe some other back road excursions in small towns. Just kind of the real Florida, if you will, away from the hustle and bustle, and just see what I can see. I'm inviting you to join me. It'll be fun. Shall you? And as I head out of celebration, got Big the Foot there in the shadows, just like he likes it. So that's something he just like to hide away, but he's in there in the shadows. He's co-piloting, tagging along. Made it to my first destination, Lake Wales. You can see the little dot there. It's going to show the route. So going to go from here, maybe down through Highland Park, down to Babson Park, and then a little farther, Frostproof, as I stated, and then venture this direction over to Fort Meade, maybe Pembroke, in that vicinity. But at the moment, I have arrived at the friendliest corner in town. Where's the dot? I can't find the dot. Located at 227 Scenic Highway, you can see the city of Lake Wales water tower off there in the distance. I'm just passing through here. I'm gonna hit a bunch of other places up as well. I've been to Lake Wales quite a few times. I never noticed this corner an auto service place, the C and the E have been removed. The friendliest corner in town. This tree has grown through this, look at this, this tree has grown completely through the roof of this. And that building over there has seen better days as well next to the train tracks. Not even 100% sure if a train runs through here anymore. If it does, it's not happening now. Always like to check in on the status of this very impressive hotel called the Grant Hotel. You see the pool there, all grown over. Opened in 1927 and the original owners, very notable names, Mary Pickford and of course, Gloria Swanson. Remember, remember her from Sunset Boulevard. This has been sitting empty for a long time. One day I'd like to get inside there, but it's never happened. One day when it reopens, I'm just crossing my fingers. That signage and statue is a little bit of a deterrent as well. It was originally called the Dixie Whales Built. Tallest structure here in the downtown Lake Wales. And as I veer over this direction, you kind of get a sense of what Florida really is, the real Florida. A lot of areas like this exist. Now you think of the theme parks and hustle and bustle of some of the cities. But most of it is like this. A lot of places you can go and just see turtles wandering around in the foliage. A lot of small towns. Good stuff. Now this is neat, they built made it look like a door going into a door. There's a real door, but then they painted this building so it's like a building on the side of a building. Very clever. Looks as if a car has busted through the side of this building. It's not, it's just a painting. Oh, and you can see the other side where the car busted down the side. This gentleman here is looking at the damage and you can see the front fender of that car. Looks as if the same artist has decorated a lot of the downtown, including the little walk pole there, well, the little, the pole you hold on to. Ooh, that is a real insect. Hello there. Kind of curious now, the Barrel Restaurant, as depicted here, shows the corner of East Central and North Market type in those coordinates, go over there, see if this building still remains. This dog, very friendly dog, standing up on its hindquarters. 
And with any small town, you can always find some good stuff at antique and thrift stores. This place is called the Vintage Market. G's Vintage Market. There's a bicycle here out front on a cart. All rusted out with the flat tire. If those wheels could talk, probably tell some, tell some stories and share some memories. This parking lot is the corner of Market and Central. And I would assume that is where the barrel used to stand. It's not here anymore. The active track runs parallel to the stationary track, which is where these relics can be found. The former train station sits right up here as well. With an antique fire truck. This is a thing of beauty right here. Has the Lake Wales Fire Department number two emblem right there on the side. 1961, here's all the bells and whistles and utensils to get this thing operational. 1961. Custom cab, an F850, Super Duty. Even has the number 22 there. Okay, that says 22, but that says two. Two different correlations. And here's a newer one. The LWFD there on the helmet. Take a tip, be safe this trip. I like that. And in proximity to the Grand Hotel, you can see it off in the distance peeking up over the trees. Pretty close, this is on the outskirts of town. Climbing up here on the side, walked up these stairs. Thought maybe you could get in that way, but it's boarded up for good reason. But you can see inside this window through the glass, West Point route, Georgia, Clins Georgia and Clinchfield. That is so cool. Slight peek in on this old truck to the dashboard there. Custom cab. Oh, even has the hoses back here. You attach them right to that. All right, moving on. Also just noticed this before getting back in the car and driving off. March 1944, the Whitcomb locomotive. Transportation course. Plenty of shade down this little thoroughfare. Supposedly down this direction is a little community called Highland Park. Find out when I get up here. Yeah, plenty of shade. It's a canopy of limbs. Tree limbs. Never knew this little area was tucked away back here. They do have a water tower. Not a lot of residents. This could have been a residence or possibly a train depot? I'm leaning towards it not being a train depot, but it kind of resembles that maybe possibly some tracks did go through here. You see a little bridge over there. But notice this, the more I look at it, I'm gonna say no. 
because it shifts too hard. But sometimes you'll see tracks be removed and they'll end up paving over it. That's not the case with that, however. A little water treatment plant here and a covered bridge. Go down here. Using the term covered bridge very loosely. It's just more of like a little regular bridge with a covering. It's kind of the same thing, but not really. This states what it used to be. 1927 Highland Park Club opened a regulation size 18 hole golf course. There comes a trash heap there. Renowned designers utilize the rolling hills and natural settings of the club property to craft a majestic layout that is still intact. And then in 1996, it became private. Or no, private, but then open to the public. Just had a little conversation with the truck driver. He stated that this area through here is no longer being used as a golf course. It was for a long time, but it hasn't been in quite a while. And jury's still out on whether or not this was a train station or not. Kind of looks like it from this end though, doesn't it? Yeah, this was all a golf course at one time. Very windy out here. This is about as Florida as it gets right here with this hanging moss. And behind the golf course building are these little fuel stations. Just drove down this little path next to it. All right, heading out of this little community. Pretty neat, discovered something new. I've never been back in here before. Former golf course. Must have an insect problem out there on these crops. They have the bags over the top of them here in the fields. That's different, huh? Just a few miles up the way, made it to Babsom Park. Stopping off at Mini Max. Looks like they're fueling up as well. I do love seeing different names of convenience stores and gas station. Obviously this is not a chain, independently owned. Probably named after a gentleman named Mac back in the day. Mini Max. Get a beverage in here. Getting a little thirsty. And the very next town over, adjacent to the one I was just at, I guess you'd call them twin towns, is Crescent Heights. No, Hillcrest Heights. And this is the town hall, not a city hall, town hall of Hillcrest Heights. 151 North Scenic Highway I'm on. Tiny little town hall. These are known as Sand Hill Cranes. There's a few of them. Oh, they're having a little tussle over there. Half a dozen, one, two, three, four, five, six of them. Sandhill cranes, they always have the right of way. If they walk in front of your vehicle, you have to let them pass. It is very frowned upon with punishment if you end up you know, damaging one of them or hurting them. They kind of they kind of own anywhere they walk, anywhere they are, just let them be. The Sandhill cranes, they run Central Florida. True story. They've taken over that yard.
approaching Frostproof now. Very interesting name for a town, most likely because of all the oranges. This place does not frost. And if it does, it's rare, so Frostproof. With the lakefront and the water down in the distance, I gotta say, I am really loving this downtown vibe through here. Yeah, I like this place, frostproof. And I guess I could say there probably is no mercy in this dojo. That's funny. Peeking up over the roof line there, you can see the water tower, this building. Could have been a gas station at one point, or maybe a general store. Has a little, little overhang that you can drive underneath. And up on the side of the poles, have these little banners up here. Stating frostproof and has, has the oranges. The citrus industry is very popular around these parts. Established in 1925, the Citizens Bank there across the way. And that noise is in the building that sits next to this classic theater called the Ramon Theater. Still has the R-A-M-O-N up on the top. One of the storefronts next door is doing a little construction. The Ramon Theater. Address 15 and Here's Elvis over here at the ticket booth. If you look beside where it says Citizens Bank on either side, it looks to be like a wheel, a little encarving of a wheel. And it probably is a wheel, but you could also utilize this as maybe a slice of an orange because of the citrus industry. So you could kind of equate it to both, if you so choose. On July 4th of 2002, the very first mural was put up here in town. Citrus County. I see a snake up there in the foliage, a gator, bird. Yeah, I love the vibe down here. Look at this relic. This realty sign. Something out of like the 70s. Frost proof, frost proof realty. Looks like a castle over there. That, that business looks like a castle. Old gas station here too. And on that corner is an automotive collections expert. That building's seen some years. The design of that roof line kind of reminds me of like Googie architecture. I think that's what that's called. On the upper level up here are these rooms belong to a former hotel called the Highlands Hotel. Take a look at the inscription here on the side of the door. Highlands Hotel. You would go right there, there's a welcome mat, a very, very dirty welcome mat and a set of stairs. Highlands Hotel. Part of the lettering has kind of fallen off. And the address is 21 and a half, between 21 and 22. Loving the design on this one as well. It's a little, little overhang, a little lip right up here. Yeah, they don't make buildings like this anymore. Even the little like glass, little windows here. See, that's cracked. Yeah, I love, love that. And the brick pattern on the side of the wall here. I think that was added on though. And it looks to me like that was added on. A neon sign up here, P&J's Recreation Pool Room. They have food and beer. It is lit up even during the day. Yeah, that's the old sign. Down on that end is the city hall. 
just kind of doing a little full pan around. train station it's now a coffee shop nicely done now turned upon the road heading towards Fort Meade it's about 15 or 20 miles but noticing a lot of abandoned buildings here along this stretch of road over here show this down this dirt crossroads corner of US 98 revved his engine as he went by not sure why but that happened Amazing how you can be kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Well, not no, in, not in the middle of nowhere, but away from everything, and there's still traffic speeding by. A lot of citrus trucks, though. A lot of citrus trucks. See over here, all citrus trees. Very tall sprinkler systems out there. Probably about 15 foot tall sprinklers. Made it to Fort Meade, the Boardwalk Cafe, next to this little painting here of a bait and tackle shop. Kind of looks like Little cowboy there got himself a fish, live bait and tackle. Another gentleman in a canoe. This 3D fencing store has a for rent sign on it. Looks like it went out of business. Also does irrigation and concrete. Next to this vacuum at the gas station. Now that is a fantastic old home right there. Look at that. Okay, granted, the last place I passed was a fixer-upper, but it was still pretty unique and pretty neat looking. As is this church building with the steeple. Very nice. Went ahead and pulled over so I could walk up and get a better view here. Up close and personal like Episcopal denomination. Oh, it's on the National Register of historic places, and they put it on that back in May of 1976. It was built in 1889. It has the stained glass windows around the side, another entrance point. Very quaint and perfect. Yeah, this is something you really just can't drive on by. You have to kind of stop and be enamored with it. You know, up at the top of the, the tower there, you can faintly see there is a, a bell up there. Probably been rung many times. Fort Meade Historical Society is inside the former old schoolhouse. Got a train sitting over here as well. 
and the town's gazebo. I've seen many a gazebo in my travels. I don't think I've ever seen one that has a set of bleachers set up beside it. I like that. A little set of bleachers here. Any entertainment? Any local entertainment that happens there? You have a nice seat. Also, this seat here has been kind of stationed into the ground. The Olma Hendrick Memorial Shed. Olma Hendrick. Looks to have passed away in 2012. Wow. Born in 2013. 100 years old, about 100 years old. There's Olma right there. Remember the heritage. This is dated 1985, this wagon, this streetcar. Take a look at that. They had a streetcar through here. Streetcar line here in Fort Meade. Never knew that. Learn something every day. The old horse drawn carriage here. This stuff is fascinating to me. I just love history. Americana, memories of the past. It's not for everyone. I like it. Oh, more bleachers. They probably move those over and attach with those whenever there's entertainment. And when I parked downtown, which is only about a block from here, the main downtown area, local gentleman got out of, got out of his car and gave me a little info. Probably going to not get it correctly, but from what I'm recalling him saying, said this is the oldest town in Polk County, and there used to be a big Cuban cigar factory that was very prominent, also known for citrus in this area, but on the end of town, so there's a big water tower that has been replaced. There used to be a wo big wooden tower out there. Pretty neat to hear his stories. Keep in mind, not everybody wants to be on camera, but everyone does have a story to tell. Buford Brown used to be the engineer conductor. And this sits right next to where the train station used to be. See where it says Fort Meade right there on the side. There is an active track next to this one that runs parallel, just like the other spot I showed. But this one is on a stationary, non-movable track. down Broadway and if anything can sum up the laid-back attitude of this town it's this gentleman over here smoking a cigar in the easy chair a few more cowboys here behind this little fence protective fence don't want any breaking anyone breaking into this business after hours Always like a cute little downtown. Something about them. A little alcove over here. Number 36, kind of tucked away in there. Wasn't expecting that. Kind of offset from everything else. Might not seem like much. Very simplistic. This is, this is a thing of beauty right here. I, am, I know I'm easily amused and I'm easily entertained by the olden days in architecture, but look at this. Rusted out top point, got the bricks for the pillars, got the pharmacy, got the plants out front. And then next to it is a castle formation. 
another Taekwondo place where champions are built. Yeah, I, I love this. Do not see stuff like this in bigger metropolis areas, you know, with the with the brickwork and the little little garden down here. They are under renovation. So sorry for the inconvenience. The pharmacy is under renovations. Let's just bask in the glory of this piece of Americana for a moment. There is no name on this establishment. No signage up top anymore. Kind of harkens back to when I was younger. You go to a, like a steakhouse that had an exterior that looked like this. That's what it's kind of reminding me of. Part of the appeal for me with, when it comes to theme parks, you know, take Disneyland for example, and Walt and Marceline. His his hometown in Marceline, Missouri, was a lot like this, and he recreated that on Main Street, USA. You have to keep in mind places that emulate spots like this. The real places do still exist if you just look for them. They're still out there. Thankfully, they still exist. And part of the reason they stay this way, relatively unchanged is because they are forgotten about. I don't mean forgotten about by those who live here or pass through occasionally. Just in general. If it were on a main highway or a main interstate, all this would be updated, changed. Would not have its kind of hometown feel anymore. It'd still have it, but it would be a lot different. Things would change. Now it is designated on the map, Pembroke, Florida. Showing it down this little road. See what's down here. Oh yeah. Signs of a previous existence of a business here, this corner store. There's a vulture up here in the road, chowing down on something. Sign states over there, it's a laboratory of some sort. And there are some cars behind there. What really does get me excited, however, is when you take a turn off of a road and you think there's gonna be nothing down on a small little, little road. And then stuff like this appears. It's just one building. This is the stuff that makes my day. Just thinking how this was someone's dream. Someone opened this. Had high hopes. And those people are probably passed on now. Still standing. Here's a place that brings back some memories. It's been around a long time, probably a decade ago, 10 years ago, I passed by here. There were no fences up or anything. I was able to walk around the property and it has not been demolished. The Altura Packing Company. Still stands, empty. Approaching the water tower here in Wanetta, W-A-H-N-E-T-A. 
The other water tower says community of. So not a town, not a city. Labeled a community. And now passing through Dundee. Another train depot here. This is also a museum. Right here on the corner of First and Main Street. I've been by this before about a year ago. Stopped and got around, looked around. Now I'm just kind of just driving by this time. Love it. And back into Celebration, Florida. Covered a lot of ground, a lot of miles. That's going to do it for today. Another back road adventure. Always fun. See you in the next video. The vlog is over.